Come in. How are you? Good, Mr. Evans. Yeah, How are you? Yeah, Lynn Evans. Have a seat. You want me here? Cold Jordan. Cold, yeah, with right. 3M. Oh, with 3M, yeah. Just have a seat and make yourself comfortable. Yes, of course. So I hope you found us here, okay? Yeah, I came to the city last night to kind of get a feel for uh, how everything good. was. And well, that's good. So traffic wasn't to. too bad. Yeah, that's great. Well, very good. Well, how are you? I'd like I, to get to know a little bit I'm about you. I'm doing great. We've been really, things have been kind of wild around here. we got a lot of interesting things going on, so trying right. to trying to uh, get some new th new things uh, started and I've just been in the organization for about a year and they kind of okay. brought me in to make some big changes and uh, that's what I'm trying to do. Right, so yeah. that you've got a couple things around Europe, are you a, you a big traveler? Oh, oh yes, you see my library here. Actually, I do travel quite a bit but the reason I'm doing this is we're on this big uh, project, I'm, and I've kind of got the vision for this thing, I hope uh, that we see it fulfilled, is uh, we're trying to, you know, take our uh, air conditioning business international. And so I've been looking at these, these are just travel books, but I've been looking at these to get kind of a sense of culture in these different parts of the world. Uh, we've, my, my vision is to kind of make the world a more comfortable place. I know that might sound a little hokey to you, but from right. an air conditioning standpoint, totally. that's what we uh, we care about. And so I'm really just trying to understand uh, more about some of these areas. Uh, do, do you travel or have you been overseas? I haven't. Or? Well, I've been out of the States one time. Okay. When I was a young child, I went to Mexico to visit oh, okay. grandparents. Yeah, and, great. Um, I can certainly see why you'd want to expand. There was a not a whole lot of air conditioning in the places we went e to. Exactly. So. Well, that's what I'm finding, even in some of these uh, very Western uh, kinds of countries, you know, I'm finding that they don't, uh, you know, a lot of times it's not a real priority. Some of it's climate oriented, but a lot of it is very cultural. Right. And, you know, we are very accustomed here, particularly those that live, you know, kind of in the southern part, you, you know, everybody has air conditioning and it seems to be, you know, across income stratus. But uh, you go over into Europe and it's not necessarily the case. And so, we're trying to make a decision about whether there's enough demand over there, uh, particularly you know on the residential side, to be able to you know make this uh, vision kind of get this vision fulfilled. So, right. Well, yeah. that sounds like a lot of good things are in the week. Or in the yeah, and, and in the process, I get to take a lot of fun trips. Yes, that sounds so. great. Uh, well, if you don't mind, I'd like to kind of stay to your time because obviously you seem okay. like you're yeah, sure. very busy yeah. man. Um, yeah. Kind of like just talk over what I'm here for. Okay, um, that's fine. And kind of sure. get going. Yeah, so like I said, I'm Cole Jordan. I'm here with 3M. Mm -hmm. uh, lucky for you guys, we're actually a multinational company, one of the largest. I've uh, heard so of we can it. Yeah, certainly I'm, help I'm you. A big, expand. big fan of your uh, post-it notes. Right, and uh, okay. I kind of just want to talk to you a little bit about VHB tape today. Okay, that'd be all right. Um, all right, that'd be fine. Yeah, but before we begin, could you kind of walk me through like the whole decision-making process? Uh, decision-making on what aspects? Or yeah, yeah, of course. Or? So, kind of like you know, um, from my perspective, like uh, okay. so, someone so a salesman comes in, pit pitches you a product, and then. Like what's the what's the chain that it goes up to okay. see? Well, if it's something if it has to do with our production process, uh, the way typically that would work is we would get a, a kind of a multi-functional team together and a kind of a task force that we put together because we don't really have a purchasing department and uh, we try to stay a little closer to these kinds of decisions. So we probably get together. Uh, you know, somebody from engineering, certainly from manufacturing, um, and then uh, finance, and then I would be involved in the process. We'd work together, and if it looked like there was a decision that was something that we wanted to go forward with, I would make the recommendation to our CEO who would make right. the final call. Are those all? Are those people all based in this building? They are, in fact. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they sure are. Yeah. Yeah, right. they're kind of scattered all over the place, but they're here. Yeah. Well, if you yeah. don't mind, if I could set my laptop. Oh, yeah, yeah, kind of right, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you so yeah. Home. yeah, so it sounds like you guys have a very rigid chain of command here and kind of a whole... Yeah, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a clear chain of command. I don't know about how rigid, you know, from, right. from deal to this decision, decision, project to project. Uh, you know, somebody will get assigned a responsibility and like this international thing is kind of outside of my job description but because I've kind of got the passion for it right they decided to let me run with it so yeah of course well if you don't mind I kind of like to talk to you a little bit more okay. about VHB tape sure. essentially what it is is an industrial grade 
viscoelastic double-sided foam tape. That... Viscoelastic. So yes. You're so already getting of... more technical than I Yeah, am, sorry, so. sorry. I'll explain that in a All second right. if you don't mind. Yeah, um, that's fine. It's kind of our claim to fame with this tape specifically, but basically what we're trying to do is replace traditional mechanical fasteners, so your rivets, your screws, um, anything else that might fall in that category. Mm. Okay. Um, that would be a big change for us. We've got a lot of rivets and screws in our our uh, units that we sell. So. Right, certainly imagine that. So yeah. what are you guys kind of, is there anything you guys need to make more efficient or improve? What are your goals right now? Well, uh, I'll just talk to uh, for a minute here about the international uh, deal we're looking at. Because of that, one of the things that we've realized that if we're, you know, we've got all our production here domestically and we don't see that really changing until we get a whole lot larger. And so if we're going to have any chance of expanding internationally, we've got to figure out ways to reduce our costs because we're going to incur additional costs associated with marketing overseas, uh, with you know, just getting our units over there. And so we're, com we're competing with domestic producers over there, domestic manufacturers. So the, we've been looking for ways to try to lower our costs through um, you know, lowering the cost of our materials. Uh, we've done everything that we feel like we can safely do uh, in terms of, you know, incorporating uh, some plastic and other materials uh, into our air conditioners, but generally they are metal. And so uh, we just don't feel like we can do a whole lot more on that side. So we've been looking at how do we improve our productivity. I think somebody said you talked to some of our folks about that uh, and what yeah. we're trying to do. and. And, uh, you know, we just, it seems like labor is really our big target area. And we have had a time and motion expert that's come in, looked for simple things we can do, like, you know, keep your drills over here, keep your materials here so you don't have to walk across the room. That's great, but uh, we've shaved, you know, 60 seconds off the process or something like right. that. And so we're, we're a little bit stumped right now of how we're doing it. It's actually... Uh, one of the major things that's standing in the way of, of really seeing this vision for going international fulfilled. Right. Okay. So I just kind of want to summarize, make sure I got sure. everything loud and clear. Yeah. So yeah. with regards to your international expansion, you're really looking to, right now you produce everything domestically, right. but you're seeking to potentially expand that overseas, mm -hmm. but you're competing kind of with their domestic producers and they're probably going to have a little bit of a competitive advantage over yep. there. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and you're looking to reduce costs via marketing, shipping, manufacturing, etc. Mm -hmm. um, you've attempted to go through lower cost materials as much as you can and is safe. Yeah. Um, you're looking to increase productivity, but your main thing right now is labor costs. Yeah, you got it. That's exactly exactly where we're focused right now. Great. Yeah. Well, I think I might have something that's very enticing to you with this VHB mm -hmm. tape. If it sounds like something you'd like to learn a little bit more about. Oh, I'd love to. If you can help me in that area, that would be great. Great. So, as I mentioned earlier, viscoelasticity is kind of our, our main claim to fame. Mm -hmm. And this is a little bit more science-y than it is hmm. uh, explanation, but I'll okay. give you basically the, the layman's term. So, the viscoelastic means that something um, has the properties of something that's viscous and elastic at the same time. Okay. So, with regard to that viscosity, it means it kind of soaks into the cracks. So, like, if you see two pieces of, you know, paper or whatever, obviously they look smooth on the surface, but there's right. kind of, you know, microscopic things mm -hmm. or... Uh, discrepancies in them. So what our foam tape does is it actually kind of soaks down into those to really create this high power bond. Mm -hmm. And then with regard to the elasticity part, it absorbs, you know, shearing, shocking, all these kinds of different stresses. Um, and this allows for a lot of adverse temperature changes without effect on the substrate's bonds. Hmm. Yeah. Wow, that's, uh, I, I follow the concept and it sounds pretty good. So, right, and then yeah. if you see here, I've kind of highlighted, these are some of the main features that we have okay. aside from the viscoelasticity. Right. And I've highlighted the ones that kind of pertain most to you. All right. So with regard to, you know, uh, reducing costs and shipping, this VHB tape is actually going to cut your units pounded, uh, pounded <laughs> weight down yeah. a couple pounds. And, you know, it oh, might not wow. seem like it's a lot, but I, it's especially when you're shipping up, yeah. freight over air, that's going to yeah. cut down costs. Yeah, for sure. Um, with regard to your productivity, uh, we've actually done some internal studies and seen that VHB tape uh, actually only takes about half the time. I've prepared wow. some stuff for you to prepare, but we can get to that in a couple seconds or a couple okay. minutes. Okay, all right. Um, and, you know, you said you were lowering costs through lower dollar materials. Mm -hmm. um, one of the good things about our VHP tape is it can bond dissimilar materials. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you can okay. metal, you do your metals and your plastics, etc. Mm -hmm. And I'll also show you how that works okay. with okay. this demo in a minute. Um, it, we have vibration dampening, so especially when one of the things that 
uh, our customers like most about this is it kind of reduces the wear and tear. Yeah. Um, and I forgot to ask, do you do residential or commercial air conditioning? We do both, but the okay. international thing is we're really focused on the residential piece okay. right now. Great. Yeah. So yeah. a lot of people won't really notice until it's on, but this vibration dampening also reduces the noise. Oh. So in a quieter area of the neighborhood, yeah. um, an air conditioned pumping, mm. air conditioning is pumping, yeah. it's going to be a little bit quieter when the fan's running. Oh, that's good. That's and then good lastly, too. especially what's good for both international or residential and commercial businesses is these high bonds. Uh, they're very, or the high bond seals, uh, they're also, they're water and weatherproof. Mm. So with regard to your industrial side, um, you know, obviously there's mm. going to be on top of the buildings, et cetera. Yeah. Um, well, even our residential, you know, we have the uh, components that are outside. Right. And, yeah, and that has been uh, a concern for us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So this will really help keep that in. And um, I think now we can move on to a demo here. So okay. All right. we have Great. here is just a very basic. This will kind of show you the dissimilar materials. Okay. So all I will have you do is peel off... <laughs> I can get it to peel off this little bit. We've gone ahead and put the uh, the one side down. Okay. Um, and I will just need you to peel this all, all right. the way off. Okay. And then once that's done, I just need you to press this on there. Give okay. it a couple just pats. Like put it right here. Or? Yep. Exactly. Okay. Push it down a little. Push bit. it down. Get the air out. All right. And that right there is your entire production process on assembling. Wow. Uh, your units. Well, that's pretty simple, even for a non-technical. Yeah, guy, so. right. And right now, it's not at full strength, but obviously you can give it a couple tugs. It's probably not going to go anywhere. Wow. It only takes good. 24 hours to fully yeah. seal. That is impressive. So that's not even the full strength of it, huh? No. And I don't have the exact numbers. I'm sure I could get with my guys and send that to you if need okay. be. Um, but yeah, uh, after 24... Exact numbers on time or is there something? On, on bonding strength. Oh, okay. Um, bonding but strength. right now we are fairly certain that it's 24 hours. Oh, yeah. Give or take, you know, yeah. an hour or two, depending on weather conditions. And well, that's, that's quite impressive. Yeah. And then here yeah. we have kind of what I was talking about with the uh, waterproof. Okay. And it also kind of points to... So these little circles are actually our VHB tape. Mm -hmm. So if need be, we can be really flexible and do uh, precision die cutting and casting for your... Uh, whatever needs you may have. Well, that's good because we do have a lot of little uh, little pieces that in fact we found some challenges with being able to get rivets on these little strips that we have for certain Right. I can imagine that's kind of a pain for your, your work. Yeah. I've actually worked in an industrial setting before oh, really? so I understand okay. you know yeah. laying the blueprints out, tapping, then drilling, or right. well, uh, punching, then drilling, then tapping, and then making sure that everything lines up. It can be yes. a bit rigorous but it as you is. can see that's what maybe 10 seconds maximum. Yeah, um, well, that's, that's great. Right, yeah, so I know this is kind of the, the worst part, but we do have to talk pricing, Okay. that's all right with you. Okay. Um, so well, let me just, before we even get to price, I, which I do want to hear about, but one, one concern, Cole, that I, I have, and I, I took the meeting just because I knew, you know, I might be your, the folks I talked to said, you know, I should hear from you, but uh, now you just focus on the VHP tape. Is that what you do? Correct. Okay, but we we actually have done business with your company before. Okay. And uh, we tried some of your adhesive, uh, liquid adhesive products. We were looking for a part of our assembly that we could use that for. And the I don't know what exactly the deal was. There was some kind of acid that soaked through and kind of ate up some of the plastic parts. And you, I handed to your company. They were very good about it. They made it right. Uh, apparently, there was some par problem with the formulation or something. But I just got to tell you, it kind of gave us a real sour taste on 3M. Right. And uh, and so now you're here talking about another 3M product. Yeah. I can I can certainly feel your concern there. Um, exactly. You know what type of liquid adhesive was it? Anything to do with the foam tape at all? No, or? it was not tape. It was it was a it was like a caulk gun uh, okay. kind of thing. Right. Uh, some kind of industrial adhesive that you sell. How long and, ago? Uh, was it was probably about five years ago. Okay. Yeah. Well, I am sorry that you had a negative experience with us. I'm not exactly sure what went wrong there. If you need any more uh, clarification on that specific problem. I can reach out to some of my guys. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I don't think we need to research it anymore. Right. But uh -huh. It's just more concern about whether we might run into the same thing with the right. product. So. Right. Yeah, I'd be more than happy to send you some more data on our adhesion. Um, we've actually been trusted a couple times with some really big things. Um, so obviously you're aware of the country of Singapore. 
Mm -hmm. um, on their treasury building, we've had on the front facing facade, we've had our VHB tape actually on the exterior panels. Uh -huh. um, and obviously it's kind of a monsoon climate. So yeah, we've been really. able to weather that for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And then since 1984, actually, we've been trusted uh, using our VHB tape on commercial airliners. Really? Wow. Yeah, because I know initially one of my concerns was, well, it's just some tape, how strong can it yeah, really be? Yeah. Um, but we've had a very impressive track record and we've built wow. a lot of trust with a lot of different entities. Well, that's good to, good to hear. Yeah, does that's that kind of help nullify what you've... Yeah, well, it helps me. Yeah, it sounds like you've got a well, your product here that you have. It sounds like it's kind of been through the testing process. So that's right. good to hear. Awesome, good. Yeah, yeah. so moving moving yeah, on sure. uh, okay. to price. I've kind of helped summarize here. Okay. Um, so essentially, and I'll show you the full numbers if you'd like to see them next. Okay. But on a per unit basis, we'll actually be saving you $52.50. Hmm. Um, assuming you guys manufacture a thousand units a month, we'll actually save you fifty-three thousand dollars per month, and then on a per year basis, we'll be saving you almost three quarters of a million dollars. Wow! Um, and I've impressive. broken it down a little bit more here. Um, highlighted in black are the okay. per unit costs. So as you can see, Beach Bay Tape does cost about five dollars more per unit, um, but overall, because we'll be saving you. We've done some studies. It's about fifty percent less time to manufacture. It might even be more in your cases. Um, where we've we've done gotten with your research team, said it's about 400 minutes assembly total, um, 15 or 50 percent of that's kind of spent, you know, drilling, etc. So we, uh, VHB tape actually takes half of that 200 minutes. That would be the 50 percent. Um, and then when we allocate it on a pro rata basis, we end up spending 79 dollars per unit instead of 131 dollars per unit. Mm. And I know you said that labor cost was a big problem you guys are having. Um, and I don't know if you guys feel like changing your hourly labor rates, but I think saving, you know, this 53, $52, dollars not only would you be saving tons of money in labor costs alone, um, yeah. but you also might even be able to increase your throughput a little bit more. So you might be able to do, instead of 1,000 units a month, 1,500 units well, a that's, month. That's enticing, yeah. Um, you know, it seems like it gives us a couple of opportunities there. One, we could just potentially keep our you know, production at the same level with a lower cost or or have, you know, greater output. Right. And especially know. with regards to you guys expanding, you might actually see some increased demand and True. being we able hope. to keep up with yeah, that that's supply. The reason. That's, our, that's definitely the reason we're doing it. So, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Do you have any questions about No, this I think you're done. And you got this information, uh, the inputs from our team? Or? Yeah, so yeah. if you'd like to clarify that with them, I'd be sure to... Yeah, no, it, it looks about right in terms of the stuff on our side. Um, yeah, I'm not quite as close to those numbers, but it looks pretty good. I'll tell you, um, the thing that I'm thinking about with this, and I, I do I find what you say very uh, compelling. Um, I gotta just tell you though, this would be a huge change for us. We have been making these things pretty much the same way and uh, you know I, I got I actually when we tried to I was telling about our time and motion studies we've got some long time you know very loyal employees and uh, and some that are older and they are used to doing things in a certain way so even when we were telling them where to put their tools and everything we were getting pushback on that and I'm frankly concerned about going in and telling some of these old timers, okay, uh, I know you're the fastest riveter in, you know, in, the, in the United States, but we're going to throw away your rivet gun and uh, I need you to now peel tape. Mm -hmm. And um, while it kind of makes sense, you know, when I see this, uh, it makes a lot of sense to me. I'm, I'm frankly concerned about that. You know, right. do, kind of getting them to embrace the change. Mm -hmm. So to clarify, you're not necessarily you see the value in this, but you're more worried about you know uh, you want to you want to stay true to your loyal employees. You don't want to. Well, I do want to stay true to our loyal employees, but frankly, it's more that I'm concerned that they may not fully embrace it themselves. And I don't. It's not that I think there's going to be sabotage, but I just think there's going to be a lot of grousing, and I just wonder how successful it will be if I can't get these folks behind it. Right, yeah. so you're, okay, so you just want to make sure that they'll be on board with the whole process. Right, right, yeah, exactly, okay. yeah. Um, is there any type of incentivization that can be passed through to them? Um, not like necessarily a bonus, but maybe, well, you know, that's an interesting idea. giving them some type yeah. of formal training, but more yeah. in a casual setting, I should say. Yeah, well, that's, that's an interesting idea. So um, um, I don't know if you've, 
had to deal with this issue before, you know, any other place. I, I, I assume you've had people that have had to convert from rivets to tape. Yeah, I've, yeah we've had a couple customers that uh, had also very similar um, kind of well-established seasoned workers, yeah. um, and they really did not like the idea. They also had a hard time trusting that tape would be able to be as good as, you know, these fasteners. Right. Um, but after a month or two, they really found that um, they've actually had a lot more success. It's a lot easier on their hands and fingers, so they have a lot less stress. Ah, um, well, there's an interesting angle. Yeah, so they yeah. might be a little, might be actually a little happier at yeah. work. They might have that week might or two. Might save us in Band-Aid costs. Yeah, and <laughs> you won't have to worry as much about insurance, lower their premiums, yeah, et cetera, overall point. cost yeah, cutting. Yeah, that's a good point. Good point. Yeah, does that help? I know I can't necessarily speak for them or on yeah. their behalf. Yeah, now that, that's, uh, you've given me a few ideas on how we might be able to go about doing it. So right. That's good. And then additionally, yeah. Um, we're not necessarily, I mean, we obviously see the benefit here to going with 3M VHB tape, but there are still certain aspects, and I'm sure there are certain applications where we're even, uh, you know, these traditional fasteners. Mm -hmm. This isn't the end-all, be-all. Right, right. Right now, I think, and it might even be beneficial to those workers, almost use it as a supplement, because, yeah. you know, it might it might be, like, on the things that need to be worked on more often, kind of like on the outside, because I don't think you're necessarily concerned with appearance. Uh, well, oddly enough... We are. It's not a major priority, but uh, you know, we've had to think about what color we're making these units. Even though people don't, they hardly ever see them. They put them on the right. side of their house where they're right. not going to be seen that much. But when you're selling it, you have people involved. Uh, you know that either usually one or the other of the spouses, mm -hmm. you know, cares about this kind of thing, and so the color of it, the smooth okay. appearance, and all that yeah. isn't a bad. Totally understandable. Yeah. Yeah. When you're sending out uh, technicians to repair these or work on these, where are they spending the majority of their time, like inside the unit? Well, uh, there is a, there certainly is still issues that happen that are motor oriented, that kind of thing. But where we've been running into things lately is actually with just basic assembly issues. It doesn't happen in the first six months, but after a while, rivets start to rust. Uh, you know, we've got, there's sort of a centrifugal, centrifugal force that's happening that's kind right. of pushing on it with the turning of the fan, and it creates a vibration that, uh, you know, causes some of the rivets to start okay. to loosen, make noise, all that kind of right. thing. Right, so you're saying the majority of the work's actually done on the exterior. Yeah, right? that's where we've been having okay. to spend time Okay, well that's lately. great then, because VHB tape actually, I didn't have it highlighted because I didn't know if it was a concern of yours right, right. but it does have a very nice smooth appearance. Good. As you can see there, there's no unsightly yeah. bumps. Yeah, that's true. Even yeah. with these, we have, you know, traditional yeah. facets, or risners rivets here yeah, right. versus our tape on the okay. on the red yeah, side. It looks a lot better, um, yeah. And then you said you were concerned with rusting and then having things wear right, and tear. Well right. with our not only just the vibration dampening to kind of cut down that noise and cut down the wear and tear yeah. with the the shearing and um, the other forces that are kind of working against mm -hmm. you, uh, these weatherproof seals are really gonna be beneficial to you as well. Right. Um, so it does actually sound like VHB tape would be a very good uh, sup not even supplement, it might even be Something that yeah, I can I can definitely see some two right positive right. positive things about what you're right. talking about there. Yeah. Well, um, if you don't see or don't have any other concerns, I don't see why we shouldn't be able to move forward. I'd like to talk next steps with you. We do work in annual commitments. Okay. Um, but we do monthly deliveries, um, and if need be, we can kind of tailor those delivery dates, uh, customize your orders, just because we want to make you as happy as you can be. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I'll tell you what really needs to happen from here. As I mentioned, um, the CEO would make the final decision. So I think what I should do is take uh, this sheet here that with the information. Maybe you can email me uh, your financials. And um, I don't know, maybe you've got another one of these. I can show these to our team, uh, an engineer, maybe one of the uh, guys on the line. And, uh, and we can just talk through the whole thing. And then if it looks like it, you know, still makes sense to everybody else, uh, then, you know, I can uh, talk to our CEO about it. Yeah, of course. I'd be totally willing to send you that. And if need be, I'd be more than willing to help kind of pitch the same thing to anyone that needs, not necessarily convincing, but to kind of see the value that... Well, that's I good. We that might be here. a good idea to yeah. uh, And then if you, involve you want to sit in on those and kind of, yeah, you know, just see, make sure that there's no inconsistencies. I, th I think that'd be uh, probably a good way to do it. All I right, like then. that. Very good. All right. Well, thank you so much. All right. Much. Well, thanks. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, thanks for coming out. All right. Well, let's talk about it. How do you feel about it? Um, I think I handled the objections a little bit better than in our 
on a class you one. You did very well um, on these objections. And I, was still, I gave you one of the hardest Yeah, I was still too. cut off guard because I was so, I had to keep telling people, um, and I helped Ben actually, Ben's my roommate now. Uh, oh, we, is that right? Yeah, yeah, so he asked me like kind of how it went and I told him about what you told me with the not wanting to stick your neck out. Yeah. He's like, I knew how to handle that because he told me <laughs> how to. So I won't lie, I was caught off guard by the big change. Um, yeah. But Those are the hardest objections because, um, you know, ask me something about the product. I'm a product expert, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, it's just I know stuff you don't know. But when you get into these fuzzy kinds of things like that about, hey, I'm really putting my neck on the line or uh, culture change, mm -hmm. it's one of the hardest things to deal with in a, in a company. And but uh, you were fast on your feet, you know. Good, good thinking about the, um, you know, incentives, uh, that kind of thing. I thought that was very, very well done. Any other thoughts about it as you went through it? Or uh, I, know you're... I know the transition to pricing wasn't super clean. I still had, because I think we talked about kind of like summarizing the benefits and then moving into. Yeah, I I advocate a lot of summarization. You know, you don't always have to do that. If you feel like you've kind of handled it uh, before, if it's pretty clear, great job of summarizing all that information about the international expansion and everything. You really got all the details down about that. So I'll tell you, Cole, if you, I don't know if this is on your radar or not, but you, you could do a really nice job at a technical sales job. Uh, you've just got a lot of uh, credibility. You, you know, just in the little bit that you've learned about this, you picked up a lot of detail about the product. Your slides were fantastic. I actually had a lot of fun making these. I was well, worried that there would be too many slides, but I was hoping that because they were kind of limited in scope, it'd be... I don't know. That, was, that was fine. And, and you know, uh, there is a, there's a class of, of selling, and, you know, it was kind of the business that I was in, where there's a heavy technical aspect to it. And so mm -hmm. a lot of the people that you're calling on are engineers, technical people, and it's not just computers. It could be a product like this. You know, this product, uh, eventually, you know, people selling this product, they're going to sit in front of an engineer who's going to ask, hey, what is the PSI on the thing, you know, and all this stuff, and, and then it really just requires a real, not only a command of, of detail, mm -hmm. but the ability to confidently talk about it, and that's right. what I really saw in you, and, and uh, you know, I don't I, I, I'm not saying you couldn't do this. I don't see you in the kind of selling that's just like 95% relational kind of, mm -hmm. hey, let's go to the ball game together, let's go out to eat, you know, and, and right. uh, you know, that kind of thing. But for selling that skews more toward the information rich, technical yeah. side. Um, and, and the other thing you should think about if you ever decide you want to go this route is there are in certain jobs, certain sales uh, organizations, there are uh, technical consulting roles that are not even uh, the account manager role. I had people in my whole career who worked side by side with me and they, were, they had various titles like solutions architect, uh, systems engineer, various things like that. Mm -hmm. And they were salespeople but they weren't seen as salespeople, they were seen as the technical expert. Right. And a young man, uh, not so young anymore, who worked with me for about 10 years, just an unbelievable guy, he eventually went into uh, the sales role himself and became a manager too. But he, he didn't have a technical background. He, he never, you know, I think he had the same amount of computer science as I probably did, one or two classes, but he just dug in and learned it, mm -hmm. just kind of like you did here. So uh, just stay open to that. I mean, are you pursuing an accounting role, or is that what you're not? <laughs> no, I was actually. Um, I'm a, Rich is uh, all of the Dayton Scholars okay. mentors, so I've been talking to him for the past eight months about the finance okay, major. Great. Bummed okay. that I can't get to use it. Um, oh yeah. No. But I'm I'm leaning a lot more towards like investment banking, which okay. is very technical and yeah, sales related, which is good. That mm -hmm. I guess I've picked up on my dad's sales skills. Um, yeah. And what does he sell? Like? Oh, he was a used car salesman so oh, for cool. like 19 years, but he made a very, he stepped out on a limb. Uh, he basically, he, he didn't like his job at all. Like, he liked selling cars, but not for, there's been a lot of weird culture changes at the place yeah. he's done, because he's been with the same boss for, uncontinuously, like 17 years. Wow. Um, That's amazing. But he, I mean, he was still working like 95 hour weeks. And yeah. Couldn't stand it, so he quit that like last week and it's going into really? yeah going uh -huh. into banking which is well, weird cool. <laughs> bit How of a shift but yeah I think, is to, he gonna do uh, like 
relationship side yeah, I have or? no idea I don't have a super close relationship yeah. with my parents but okay. uh, from what I talked to them about it seems like yeah he's willing he's definitely willing to foot the like 60 percent pay cut for the wow, 50 for the percent hour cut good for him um, but yeah I'm not sure exactly what he's doing I know right now he's talking to a bunch of like credit unions like kind of local because okay. he just wants to I'd have to assume he'd probably do either like a branch manager type deal or something like a loan yeah. officer, et cetera. Yeah, well, I'm sure they'll want to use his skills at you yeah, know, they, communicating with people. Yeah, hopefully. Well, please show him. I'm going to send these videos out. and Please show him this video because I think he'll be very proud of you. You really did a really fine job. Thank you. You, you could definitely do this kind of work if, it, if you decide that's something you want to do. Awesome. So I'm glad you took the class. Yeah, I am too. I was, uh, yeah. There's a lot of classes at Asbury that look interesting that don't actually get advertised. <laughs> like, cause that like the fundamentals of selling, it's like in a directed study with Hamilton on uh, international uh, markets and monetary policy. Okay. And the uh, Dr. Lee has one that seems really interesting. It's the financial mathematics. I'm yeah, I just saw that. Uh, yeah. It came out the other day. Yeah, I sent him a note after he sent that out. In, in, you know, all about calculating interest. I said, Duke, does this include telling us where there's a bank that will pay interest? <laughs> that's good that's funny I think it's cool seeing like uh, like old newspaper ads like uh, bragging like, about their point oh yeah, six or with like uh, CDs and it's like a yeah. it's like a one thousand dollar CD for like ten percent interest and right. like point zero oh, oh yeah you mean the old ones yeah, yeah like 19, I know that's what I think I thought you were talking about I think it's so funny now today they say highest interest rate you so know among one, CDs yeah, like, point, yeah 12 and yeah. a half basis points yeah, exactly. it's going to make me a lot of money on my five dollars <laughs> that's right that's right well that's great well you did a really fine job and I'll, I'll give you some uh, written feedback uh, on it as well but I think you you uh, perform very well so well, thank you so appreciate all your hard preparation it's good having you in the class yeah, all right we'll see you later okay take it easy we'll do